So I'm going to start probably with, uh, since they're all on stage here, uh, Joel Reber, Reber, Reber wants to know, how do you choose the musicians in your band? If you want to use your, your microphone. Uh, first is just, uh, for me, number one is like the energy, you know, the vibe that I get from the musicians. Uh, I mean, I want to play with great musicians, and there's so many great musicians in New York, but also just the um, the, the humility um, um, that, I, that I sense from the, the musicians, the dedication, you know, like ultimately it just has to be all about the music, you know, when I, when I think about my heroes. Um, and the bands that I really appreciate, like, you know, uh, like John Coltrane, um, uh, uh, Miles Davis, the way he, you know, the bands that he had, there was a camaraderie there that was just like, you know, I, I, like you can feel that in the music. So that's what I want. Like people that are just dedicated to the music that I like to be around and are great musicians, you know, and they understand where I'm coming from and they, they're, they're support. It's like a friendship, you know. You want to be with someone that's going to support you and, 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 and have your back regardless of, of, of where things go and what happens. And, and, and people that are also willing to take a chance. Like that last song, you know, we never played that before and we barely got to rehearse it. And everyone's like, let's go. Let's do it. So stuff like that, you know, and it's good because I almost didn't play it, but I feel like, man, let's just jump in and do it. And those are the kind of people that you want to play with. And know. it sounded great, too. So Thank you. you know? <laughs> that's a plus. And, and these guys sound great, too, so that's also a plus, you know. Yeah. Um, so the next question, uh, since you mentioned your heroes, there's two questions related to people that you work with or, you know, um, have studied with or, you know. So the, the first question uh, is from Ron Scott. Or actually, I'll ask this one first because this came up in the earlier set. But uh, Kim Kleinman wants to know a little bit more about your relationship with Lee Konitz. Maybe if you want to talk about how you guys met and started hanging out. Um, well, yeah, like 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 I mentioned in the um, first set, I I um I met him at the jazz gallery when it was downtown, and I asked him for a lesson. And um, he's just like it's the same thing, like friendships and humility and and people that are just cool. Like it's Lee Konitz, and he's a superstar. He's great, but at the end of like like Lee doesn't think like that. Like he didn't he didn't have that kind of attitude. So, I mean, you know, they were. Like, I was just I, I don't know who I was um, telling, but I was saying earlier that. You know, um, Lee called me. Lee was calling me like right, uh, like before he passed. He was calling me and saying, "Hey, let's go hang out." And I would, I mean, I would feel bad because I couldn't hang out with Lee Konitz, you know. So it, you know, it was just something where it, it, it turned into me just calling him for his birthdays because I couldn't couldn't get in touch with him. I mean, I couldn't hang out with him. And um, he was just, you know, he just became a friend, you know. But it's it's something that you don't really imagine. You know, I never thought I would, I was listening to Lee Konitz in college, never imagined I would come to New York and meet him and, you know, I mean, we weren't like best friends, but I would, I mean, the fact that I had his number and could call him alone is crazy to me, you know? So, yeah. yeah I honestly had that same reaction. Like when I was in college, I, I came from Florida for from two years there and I, I took a class that we listened to Lee Konitz and then I came to New York and Lee walked in. I'm like, oh my God, it's Lee Konitz. <laughs> you know, so, yeah. um, but anyways, the next question is uh, from Ron Scott, who's one of our board members actually. And he wants to know, what did you learn from being a longtime member of Roy Haynes Fountain of Youth Quartet? Uh, I learned a lot. <laughs> um, loaded question. Yeah, that, that is a loaded question. Um, I mean that that goes back to band to like to like the like the band the the, the band question. I, I learned a lot about like band leading and, and Roy has the same vibe, you know, and you know, everyone was always saying like Fountain the Youth, you know, Fountain the Youth and they always thought that he had us because we were well we are younger. <laughs> but you know, Roy one day someone asked him about the Fountain of Youth and asked him about us and after a while we weren't that young anymore. But he said, "That's not about them. That's about me. <laughs> you know, I'm the, I'm, the, I'm the, <laughs> I got the founder of youth. You know, and and you know, um, I think from Roy, a lot, I've learned a lot about time and just like being in the moment. Roy was like the first time I played with someone, and not the first time, but you know, I played the first one of the first gigs I played with Roy after the set. He he yelled at me because I didn't play a long enough solo." You know, and he really wanted us to be in the moment. He, he didn't care about how long the set was. 
he just wanted, he was like, it's all about the music, you know, and you have to be in the moment and just enjoy life. That's one thing. We would be out on the road and Roy was always the one, you know, hanging, you know, always hanging after the set, you know. He, sometimes he would go back on the drums and play more. And he was just, there's another one that was just, it was just, everything was just about the music, you know, about the music and, and having a good time, you know. Yeah, Roy came in one day um, to watch his, his grandson Marcus, Marcus Gilmore, um, play one time and uh, yeah so Roy's, Roy's in the back kind of like where Rio is right now and everybody just gathers around him and he just starts tap dancing yeah, right, right. And it's, it's like man it's like yeah. fountain of youth indeed yeah. <laughs> um, so let's see two more questions I think um, Rachel Bade McMurphy wants to know if you write words to your compositions uh, she's wondering because your melodies are so lyrical and singable and uh, she wonders if you ever use lyrics or speech patterns as devices in your improvisations as well uh, no not in my improvisations but uh, I've, I've, I've been thinking about lyrics um, from time to time sometimes when I'm writing I might I mean I, I never wrote them down but I might kind of like sing something or put a, you know, put a, um, put a, uh, put lyrics to something that I'm, I'm writing, but I, 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 don't, I never really got deep into it. And I think we're going to do one more question. Um, and this is actually the first one that was asked tonight. Um, this is from Jacqueline, Jacqueline Toth. Um, and I guess we're going to throw it back because, uh, she wants to know as someone who grew up, uh, an hour North of Philly, uh, she would love to heal, hear your take on what makes the Philly jazz scene unique. Well, wow. that's a loaded question <laughs> as well. Um, I think, you know, from going up there, um, there was always a very strong sense of community there and, like, support. Like, you know, when I was coming up, like, you know, I, Shirley Scott was around and Mickey Roker and um, a bassist named Arthur Harper Grover Washington Jr., John Blake Jr., like these were all people that would, you know, like you couldn't go to a gig. If I walked in any gig without my horn, I would be in trouble, you know? And um, they would, you know, they would call me for gigs and they would come to your gigs and, you know, there was that kind of support that was, you know, for me it was like priceless, you know, and, and, and like just mentorship. You know, to be able to, you know, e even like Grover Washington Jr. would be playing in a huge venue and would invite you up on the stage, you know. And I think that kind of community um, is really in uh, encouraging, you know. And I, I, I think that's what kind of helped me stay encouraged is just that positive energy, you know, that I got from everyone. And it wasn't even until I left and, you know, left Philly and moved to Boston and I'm you know, I'm hearing my friends talk about Shirley Scott and, you know, uh, Mickey Roker, and, and I didn't even, I'm not even realizing how important they were to the scene overall, you know. I mean, this, and there was this, there's, a, there's a whole, so many other uh, musicians, you know, that were there that just really, like, took me under their wing, and that's something that, you know, I, I don't see that many, I don't see communities like that and too many other places that I've traveled to is, is it's really, really, um, really strong. And I'm, 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 I'm really thankful for it, you know? Yeah. I mean, I, I know the, there was a teacher that you and Jonathan Blake had that yeah. uh, was very, um, I guess formative in your guys' yeah. experience. And I know that there's like also Anthony Tidd now that's yeah, doing Anthony his Tidd's thing. There. And, uh, there's an article that came out that they, they, they uh, spotlighted all these things. But yeah. anyways, um, we're going to leave it at that. But I will say, if you want to hear more about uh, Jaleel's uh, experience in Philly, we actually did a hang with you um, a couple months ago where you actually spoke about that a little bit. Oh, I think uh, it was, uh, right? Yeah. Um, that up, it's still up? That, that's... Uh, People can access the hangs afterwards, right? As well, or yes. So, so yeah. So, people, if you want to go purchase our uh, re our recording of our happy hour hang um, with Jaleel, that's online. He also was on our uh, lockdown sessions where he presented a really beautiful video as well. Um, so, I recommend checking that out. Um, with that said, 
thank you and thank you guys as well. Um, that was a beautiful two sets. Um, if you guys want to support the Jazz Gallery, go uh, and become a member if you're already a member. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, which you're on right now. If you've done that or can't do that for some reason, go on our Instagram and follow us. Like us on Facebook. Review us wherever you can. Subscribe to our email list. This Q&A is going to be posted later um, uh, for everyone to watch on our YouTube channel. We're going to cut it up and you know, put it up there. So, um, yeah. Hope you hope to see you soon. Uh, we have all these wonderful events coming up, so check out our website, jazzgallery.org. Have a good night.